Hi guys, this is Dan from Avent Novus. Hey, today I'd like to show you how I make an ice map. To do it though, I needed some additional assets. I need some glaciers, I need some things that look like ice, look like cold places. Um, to do this, this, this is kind of my own home recipe. First of all, we go to the height mapper. It's the word height mapper. I'll put the link in the description below. And I'm selecting different areas that are famous for ice that have been eroded away. Now up in the top right corner, I'm setting a render. And then I'm gonna hit the render button. And this is going to render a very large image for me. Now this image uh, will be saved to my computer. It's pretty much a black and white height map. Now. It's going to export, there's going to be some flashing, and there's also going to be, it's going to go really slow. Make sure you don't move off the image, otherwise you get these like weird white triangles. That's a bad thing. So let it do its thing, it will save it to a predetermined location. Once that's done, here's this part. And then once I get those done, I go to Photoshop and plump them all in a document. I go to the lowest layer first, select the dark, get rid of it, and have these nice little islands. Okay, then I repeat this process. And what I'm looking for is pretty much exactly where snow is, uh, land that's been shaped. And this particular piece comes from places in Greenland. I'm also looking for a large area, uh, snow fields, and small areas, snow fields like that. The reason for this is I'm going to make two separate uh, sets of images. And what I'm doing right now is I'm selecting the dark part of the map. I want to make two different sets of images for Wonderdraft. One big, one small. The big ones are going to be these large areas that uh, represent big glaciers and snow fields. The smaller ones are just pockets of snow and stuff like that. So I'm choosing a div diverse mix. And again, this is uh, sped up footage showing exactly how many that I do. I use a lasso to cut them up, get rid of some white stuff. In the next part of this, I'm going to take all those files and create a grid pattern, just right there. That grid pattern is, I'm then going to take these islands and move them in here. This grid pattern is going to give me a collection of the different libraries. Lower them down. Uh, once I'm done, it kind of looks like this. Can I edit them, put them in place, divide it equally. And now I'm... So wait for a second, see what the heck I'm doing. Oh yeah. Okay, at this point I am changing the graphics of the island. I don't want that black and white. I want just mass. So I create another layer. I select emboss. I put a little bit of an emboss in there. Gives you kind of a definition. And with that, I then go in, after I'm done embossing one layer, the top layer I go in, and I change the blending type to a certain type. Just kind of play with it. You know, play with what you like. At this point, my island shapes are done. And I start going into my smaller island shapes and do the same thing. So what I'm doing right now is I'm cropping the islands, the, the different sprite islands, the different little ma uh, land masses, using those guidelines that I've previously made. I'm saving these as a PNG file. And I do it again and again. Again, I crop it. I save it as PNG. I put it in a folder. I label it. These are my bit. The ones you're seeing on the screen right now are my big islands, my big uh, snow fields. Then I'll be doing my small snow fields here in a second. And the reason I want to do this is I want to have a big area that I can just plop down and then use the smaller little snow fields to allow me to. Yeah, here's the small snow fields. Um, these snow fields allow me to modify and add additional texture and interest in the snow. Not, adds additional interest into the areas. All right, right now I've got everything saved. And I've made uh, my own little folder called uh, pretty much snow. Gonna have to cut this out because this part's stupid. Good. 
Once I have my sprites in the folder, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add those to Wonderdraft. First thing we do, we go hit the hamburger menu, then user files. Now, in a previous video, I showed the correct uh, way to set up these user files. It's very specific. I then open up my maps and images, go back to my user interface, get a little confused on what's what. We go into our assets. And then we go into example, very important. Then we go into our sprites. And I want to put these in the mountain area. Okay, now I've already done that. So here's my big and small. There's the big ones. Open up my small ones. Now there's a certain file when you first put in these that will not be there. This file here, when you first put these in, will not be there. Uh, it's a file that creates the interface between your images and WonderDraft. Don't delete it. Uh, we're now going to close WonderDraft, and this is closed. It's going to prepare those. So we're going to open it right back up. We're going to go for a new map. As that opens, you see it actually loading the, all the different things, the user content, the premium assets, which I really recommend. Now we're going to go over into symbols. We're going to go down to mountains and find our mountains we made. Well, we'll find the ice fields. And there we go, little ice fields all around. You know, again, if you don't like something it created, just control Z it, place a new one down. Take your time with these. Now we have a really big ice field areas. All right, and then we can reduce the size of this guy and place it where you want it. Just really quick, easy, makes it a lot more interesting. Uh, I also use these to create the rivers. I'll show you in a video. I'll make a video on that. Uh, but this is Dan with Avid Novus. That's how I made those images. And I will get that video out as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Have a great day.